Welcome! For those that missed our other videos, my name is Roger and I'll be showing you how to configure the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler. This is the final part of this three-part configuration series. In this demonstration, I'll show you how to connect an OPC UA client to a classic OPC server. For this demonstration, I'll use two virtual machines. One will have the OPC UA client on it, and the other will have the classic OPC DA server on it. Because we want to avoid remote DCOM connections, I have the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler already installed on the same computer as the classic OPC DA server. The OPC UA client will connect to Tunneler remotely over a single TCP port, and Tunneler will convert OPC UA to DA and then connect to the classic OPC DA server locally. Firstly, we'll set up the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler. On the server side, open the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler configuration GUI from the Windows Start menu. Click Yes to the screen. Choose the UA Client to Classic Server tab. By default, Matricon OPC simulation is configured in this area. However, for the purpose of this demonstration, I have removed the default entries. Before we begin, let's take a look at some of the options in this tab. The play and stop buttons control the state of the background service. The people icon controls username and password access for connecting OPC clients. The next button allows you to configure what policies Tunneler supports and the server URL. The next three buttons manage certificates. The first allows you to manage trusted issuer certificates. The next is for managing trusted certificates and the last is for managing rejected certificates. The final button is for setting the log level. Let's go ahead and configure a connection. Click the plus sign. In most cases, we recommend you install the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler on the same computer as the classic OPC server to avoid DCOM issues. In this example, we will connect to the Matricon OPC server for simulation on the local host. Select matricon.opc.simulation under the DA category. Note that this mode supports classic OPC DA, HDA and a and &E servers. Scroll down to see the options. In most cases, you will not need these. You can change the browse name to whatever you like. This will appear as a folder in the OPC UA client. The separated chars field is designed to speed up browsing. In this case, I know that the simulation server uses full stops in the tag names, so I'll put a full stop in here. Note, you can add as many separator characters as you like, one after the other, if your OPC server uses more than one type of character between items. If your OPC DA server supports OPC DA3, we suggest changing the supported DA version to 3.0 as this will significantly speed up browsing. Click Add. If the service is already running, you will be prompted that a restart will take place. If not, start the service by clicking the play button and configure the status of running. Next, copy the server URI. Now go to the OPC client computer. In this exercise, I'm using the OPC Foundations test client. Note that although this says uh, DA client, it is an OPC UA DA client. In other words, it's an OPC UA client that supports the OPC UA DA part of the specification. Paste the copied URI into here. 
If you have configured security in Tunneler, enable use security. For this exercise, we'll use no security. Now click the connect button. You will receive an untrusted certificate message. Click yes. You can now browse the classic OPC server with this OPC UA client and add tags. Now that we have basic functionality going, let's go back and se secure the connection. Start by disconnecting the OPC UA client. Go back to the OPC server side. The tunneler configuration GUI should still be open. Open the server security policies. Uncheck none and sign. Then check sign and encrypt and basic 256. We'll set the user token policies to anonymous. Click OK, then click OK again to restart the service. Confirm the service is running. Now go back to the OPC client computer. Confirm the URI is the same as before, but this time click Use Security. Then click Connect. Note that the error that is displayed, which says, Error establishing a connection. Error received from remote host. Could not verify security on open secure channel request. This indicates that the OPC UA server has rejected the connection request as it does not yet see this OPC UA client as a trusted friend. Click close. Close the OPC UA client. Go back to the OPC server side the Tunneler configuration GUI should still be open. Open the rejected certificates. You can see there is a rejected certificate from OPC Client 1 in this list. We have tried to access this OPC UA server with a client for which a certificate is not known. So Tunneler has rejected the request and placed the received certificate in here. Right click on the entry and choose copy. Close the window, then open Trusted Certificates. Right click in the lower area and choose Paste. Click Close. Now restart the service to pick up the new settings. Confirm the status is running and then copy the server URI once again. Go back to the OPC UA client computer and open the OPC UA client. Paste the URI and retry the connection with use security enabled. Now that the certificate is in the trusted area, the connection succeeds and you can now browse the classic OPC DA server using your OPC UA client. Congratulations, you have successfully configured the Matricon OPC UA Tunneler to allow an OPC UA client to connect to a classic OPC DA server. And that concludes this video, which is the last in the series. Thanks for joining me.